Hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon, and thanks for hanging around for the very last session. Um, delighted to be here. Just for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Yvonne Kavner. I'm the Director of Chemical Analysis in Forensic Science Ireland. Um, thank you very much to Brian, who just disappeared, for inviting me along, <laughs> for inviting me along today. Um, I'm here with some of my FSI colleagues who are sitting down here, and I have to say it's been such a, a superb day of presentations, and it's so interesting for us particularly to see how drug research, drug policy, drug analysis all comes together and, you know, comes together kind of in this cohesion here. So um, very, very interesting from a scientific forensic practitioner's point of view to see the wealth and the types of discussions that are happening here today. So I am delighted to be chairing this particular session um, that's entitled Innovation in Monitoring and New Indicators. So again, very much where research and testing itself start coming together and informing policy. So three superb speakers for today. So I'm delighted to be able to um, introduce them separately as they're ready to go. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start, um, I'm going to ask Sinead McNamara, she's going to be our first speaker, ask her to come up. Uh, Sinead is a senior biochemist in the HSE lab, the National Drug Testing Lab in Pier Street. She has a wealth of forensic toxicology experience over 20 years, even though she looks way younger than that. Um, she's been particularly involved with um, novel psychoactive elucidation over the last 10 years or so, and I have to say has always been very generous with her time and her expertise, sharing that information with other testing laboratories. Um, she has been involved in two major projects in the, in the immediate um, past, or just right now. So the Irish syringe policy project, pilot project, and also was involved in the testing for the back of house project at the recent Electric Picnic Festival. So today, Sinead is going to talk to us about the Irish Syringe Analysis Pilot Project. And um, I'll ask her to come up now. Thank you. Thanks very much, Yvonne. Um, so normally in the National Drug Treatment Centre Laboratory, we do, um, our main work is analysing uh, urine for drugs of abuse. Uh, for opiate substitution patients. So this has been a nice departure for us. Uh, we found it very interesting. Um, we had lots of fun at Electric Picnic and we uh, did the syringe testing project uh, last year and uh, published the report there a few months ago. So just, I'm gonna go through the background, uh, the sample collection, how we analyzed the samples and the results we got. So uh, the SCAPE syringe testing project was first implemented in Paris in 2015, followed by Hungary and Switzerland. And in 2017, the EMCDDA, in collaboration with the OFDT in France, developed a partnership with other European partners and called it the European Syringe Collection and Analysis uh, Enterprise, or SCAPE for short. Uh, the aim of this project was to obtain a representative and comparable data on injecting drug use in a network of Europe European cities uh, by coordinating a yearly collection campaign for use syringes in those cities using a common methodology. So from an Irish context, the partnership was agreed in spring 2021 uh, with the EMCDA and the HSE and Merchants Key Ireland were chosen for the needle exchange service. Um, all of the participating European sites collected syringes uh, throughout the month of September in 2021 and our aim was to test a minimum of 150 samples. So there were two sites chosen for the campaign. Um, Dublin, in which we analysed 100 syringes um, from a city centre uh, syringe exchange location. Dublin has a population of 1.43 million and the needles distributed in 2020 were 684,000. Um, our second site was the Midlands, where we analysed 55 syringes from Offaly and Longford with a popula combined population of 292,400. And uh, the needles distributed in that location were 20,472 in 2021. So uh, for the syringe collection, the sharp spins were delivered weekly to the uh, lab by Merchantsky Ireland staff. 
They were stored in our cold room there until we were ready to extract them in the lab. And when we were ready for extraction, the bins were shaken so we could distribute the contents as much as possibly, possible. Um, and then we emptied them into a tray in the lab and mixed them further. So the first thing we did uh, was record macroscopic observations. Um, so things like visible traces of blood in the syringe. Now this is extremely important because not if there's blood in the syringe, not only are you analyzing the contents of the syringe, you're also analyzing the uh, person who used the syringe's uh, blood, so there could be traces of drugs in that blood. Uh, we looked for wear marks that might indicate that the syringes were uh, used previously, and we recorded the syringe and needle types and looked for any distinctive signs. So they're just pictures of the various syringes and uh, needles uh, distributed by Merchants Key. So then we subjected the syringes to the escape extraction protocol. So this is the procedure that all of the European cities followed. Uh, we placed a mill of methanol in a test tube, placed uh, the used syringe into that test tube, and basically pumped it up and down five times, and then uh, placed uh, a, a clean um, syringe into that test tube, sucked it up, and and filtered it through what we call a syringe filter into a HBLC vial where it was stored in the freezer until we were ready to analyze the samples. So we tested by a technique called LCMS, which is liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. We did start targeted screening of 232 drugs and their metabolites. We used five different methods um, and used, it's, a, it's a confirmatory technique, so it's the kind of technique that would be used in forensic cases. And each compound had two transitions, um, which were, were like a, a fingerprint for each compound. So our first method was our opiate method. Uh, we had 54 substances in the metabolites, including morphine, codeine, heroin, oxycodone, fentanyl, tramadol, and some of the new synthetic opioids like isotonitazine and carfentanil. Then we had our new psychoactive substance screen, 130 substances in the metabolites, including the amphetamines, um, like methamphetamine, MDMA, uh, cocaine, ketamine, the cathinones, so the likes of 4-methyleth-cathinone, and alpha-PVP, which were very popular a number of years ago, with alpha-PVP being associated with uh, HIV outbreak a number of years ago. We looked for the piperazines, like BZP and 3TF-MPP. These would have been one of the first uh, compounds on the scene when the head shops kicked off back in 2008. And we looked for the phenethylamines like the N-bombs um, and 2CB. Um, one of the uh, 25i N-bomb was associated with that uh, death of poor guy Alex Ryan in Cork a number of years ago. And then we had our benzodiazepine screen which had 48 three analytes and metabolites including diazepam, alprazolam, fluoralprazolam, Tamazepam and the new psychoactive benzodiazepines like atizolam and fluoralprazolam. And that orange tablet there is just one of the tablets that we analyzed in the lab that had both atizolam and tramadol in it. And then we look for the Z drugs and the gabapentinides. So zopiclone, zolpidem, pregabalin, which is Lyrica, baclofen, and gabapentin. And then our final method is, was the 2 3 for a methyl methcathinone method, and I hope I'm not giving people leaving start chemistry flashbacks from this slide. It might be a bit sciencey for some people. Um, so we look for three analytes: two methyl methcathinone, three methyl methcathinone, and four methyl methcathinone. The, these all have the same molecular weight and the same fragments, so we couldn't distinguish them on the LCMS. So what we had to do was develop a separate method to separate out the three compounds. You can see they're very similar, but they just have um, a different position of their methyl group. Um, so result-wise, so syringes, you can see that the one mil insulin syringes were, the, were most prevalent, um, and these were the ones that were given out most by Merchants Key, so it's not surprising. Um, they cause less damage in veins um, as our narrow bore. And then needle-wise, again, obviously the diabetics uh, needles because that's what was given out most, but there was a higher proportion of blue needles, 28% in Dublin compared to the Midlands, um, 
which had 9%. So blue and green needles uh, are slightly longer and can be associated with poor injecting practices. So just an overview of the results. We found traces of 32 different drugs and metabolites in syringes from both Dublin and the Midlands. Uh, seven syringes from Dublin didn't contain any detectable substances. Four syringes only contained a metabolite or adulterant, so they were eliminated from the escape protocol criteria. Uh, so this gives, gave us a total of 89 syringes uh, in Dublin to be included in the data. 60% uh, of the syringes were observed to have visible blood residue, which obviously could give us rise to drugs or metabolites being extracted from the blood in the syringes. So this is just an overview of the results from Dublin. So you can see uh, heroin was in 93, just over 93% of the syringes, cocaine in 86%, um, the amphetamine group had 35.9%, Methadone in 61%, and I'll go through these in, in more detail in the next few slides. In the Midlands, similar, 98% heroin, 89% cocaine, um, and you can see the cathinones there are up at 23%, and methadone at 50%. So just the difference between Dublin and Midlands, so we found, so the reason we had to develop that 2, 3, 4 methyl methadone method is because we couldn't distinguish, didn't know which of the three it was, so we had to develop a method when we saw it. Um, and you can see that three, so three methyl methadone, which we hadn't actually seen in our laboratory before, was seen in 23% of the Midland samples and 11% of the Dublin samples. We saw methamphetamine in 32% of the Dublin samples and 18.2% of the Midland samples. We saw fluorazepam in uh, the Midlands only at 12.7%, and we think, uh, because of the levels that we saw, we think they were actually injecting the fluorazepam. Fluorazepam it wasn't from blood traces. Uh, it looked like they were looks like they were probably injecting it. Um, Cocaine-wise, similar in both uh, Dublin and the Midlands. And then oxycodone, we only saw in Dublin, did not see in the Midlands. Um, Zopiclone, we saw in 9% of Midland samples and 4.5% of the Dublin samples. And Pregabalin, um, we saw in 34.5% of the Midland samples and 24.7% of the uh, Dublin samples. Ketamine, we only saw in Dublin, not in the Midlands, at 7%. Um, Adulterant-wise, we saw Paracetamol at 88%, caffeine 83%, levamisole 53.5%, phenacetin and benzocaine around the same at 22%, and some lidocaine at 5.6%. Now, these are all very common adulterants, nothing unusual there uh, would often be seen. So we did all this when there was a pandemic ongoing, so obviously that could have affected our first year findings. As I mentioned, we found uh, three methamacathinone in both sites, which we hadn't seen before. Um, probable fluorazepam injection in the Midland site. Oxycodone and ketamine only in Dublin. The cocaine figures are obviously very high. Um, this wasn't surprising to us because our urine testing um, positivity rate in uh, 2021 was 21.5% and can be as high as 35 to 50% in some clinic sites around Ireland. Um, our methamphetamine figures are very high. Um, this, so this surprised us because our urine testing uh, shows us about a 0.7% positivity rate for amphetamines. Progabalin use, high again, this didn't surprise us. We've been monitoring this since 2014. And in 2015, we found a 7% positivity rate in urine. And in 2021, we found, we've found 15.5%. Uh, and the good news was that we didn't find any of the synthet new synthetic opioids. So we've just finished the collection for this year. Uh, we just got our final delivery of our Sharps book last week. So we're starting this all over again. Um, lucky me. Um, so hopefully we'll have a report next year um, and see if there's any surprising results from that. Thanks very much.
Thank you, Sinead. It's a really interesting um, study. It's, it's interesting to see how drug-taking behaviour... It'll be interesting to see the comparison between your post-COVID and during COVID results and, you know, what, what presents. Um, it's also surprising what you found in syringes. I'm going to have to talk to you about that later. <laughs>